What up, y'all? It's your boy here making a building. I'm all the way across the pond. I'm in London town. You already know what time it is with my guys, man. Producer culture. Drop a few gems, man. Stay tuned, man. I hope y'all really tune in to this because it's a good one. Let's get it. How are you today? I'm good, man. I've been in London since Monday, just embracing, like seeing what the coach is about, just catching a little vibe. It's my first time here, so I'm not Oh, the first time? time. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one, that was actually going to be my like first question. Okay. So, um, how have you found it here so far? Um, it's great. It's cold. It's it's a little rainy, but other than that, it's a vibe though. I like I, I like the shopping. I went to Harrods. Is that how you? Oh, Harrods. Harrods. Yeah. yeah. It probably saying it right. Yeah. <laughs> so Harrods. I went there and had a cool little time. But other than that, it's just been like trying different food and going to different spots or whatever. Would you come back? Of course, okay. I plan on coming back. Yeah. Okay. Good. So what even brought you to London in the first place? I'm actually shooting my video to my new single. Um, it's off my producer album. My first single was called Thought Box, and it featured Meek and Tyga and uh, Namir, Two Chains and A Boogie. Then I did a girl remix version with Chinese Kitty, Dream Doll, Young and May, Dreezy, and Mulatto. Shout out to Mulatto. That's my girl. Shout out to Mulatto. And um, so now I'm here doing the second single. Off, I mean, the th this is the third single off my producer album, and um, it's featuring. Um, Jeremiah Fabulous, uh, one of my guys, Ivory Scott, that's like an artist that I'm working really close with. Um, he writes a lot of different records with me as well. And then um, Kids Daniel is on the record as well too. Um, so yeah, so you announced recently that you had recently been appointed as Vice President of Empire. Uh -huh. So congratulations for that. Thank you very much. Um, so how's it been so far there? Man, it's been great. You know, like um, I was at Atlantic Records and I sold, I've worked there for like four years and I sold a substantial amount of records, was involved in a lot of different um, number one records over there with them, had a great time. Then I had a conversation with Ghazi and that kind of like at the end of my contract kind of pushed me towards going to work with Ghazi, just the independent mind state and just how he wanted to show me about the business and different things behind the scenes that can help me amplify my business with my own label. So I came there and it's just been a slew of hits like since then like I, I think the first thing I did was a uh, Tink's last album being from there we did Young Blue Baddest um, with Chris Brown and 2 Chains and that record has been like top 10 for like 47 weeks out of the year you know what I'm saying so that was a big record for us then um, I was able my guy Ivory who I spoke of about earlier um, put him in we did a uh, Fireboy Peru with uh, Ed Sheeran that's another okay. record yeah, yeah, yeah that we yeah. had a lot of success with and now Tink's new album is on the way out that I just executive produced as well and her single with two chains called Cater is about to be crazy it's going crazy it just came out a couple of days ago so I'm excited man okay so you said you worked with um Fireboy Peru I saw you also worked with David O as well yeah you I worked with on David. that track yeah. yeah yeah I work with David O a lot we got a lot of great stuff on the way too shout out to David O man that's yeah, my yeah I'm looking forward to that yeah I love for my sure. beats, so looking forward to that um, so what other, so those are the current projects you have on right now with Empire, uh -huh. is there anything else going on or? Oh man, well, uh, with, with Empire, I'm executive producing Jim Jones' new album, we have an album that we're about to drop, then I executive produce, um, I'm doing Sean Sloan, it's a new artist that we're working with that's on Empire, that's amazing, I think that he's like one of the new guys that's going to be crazy. Then from there, I mean, I have my hands in so much different stuff. We did a, like an African camp recently, so um, a lot of African artists I've collaborated with or whatever, so you're gonna hear a lot of that stuff or whatever coming okay. out. So it sounds like you've really got your hands in everything, like all pretty, the genres. Like, pretty much, Do yeah. you work with anyone in the UK, any UK producers or artists? Um, UK producers, um, I've, I've not stuff that's came out as of yet, but I mm -hmm. have been collaborating with some UK producers. And then my guy, Earwolf, I don't know where he's from. I think he might be from Sweden or something like that, but he produced my single as well as a bunch of other hits we got coming out as well too. Obviously it's been a long time. It's been about 13, 14 years mm -hmm. since you released Sexy Lady yeah. as Youngberg. Yeah. So obviously since then you've had nine Grammy nominations, yeah. um, nine billion streams, yeah. and you've also rebranded your whole career mm -hmm. as a producer as well. Mm -hmm. So how, what has kept you motivated and also consistent? Because you have been very consistent. For See, the crazy thing is that um, a lot of people, um, before I was Youngberg, my name used to be Iceberg, and I was signed right. a DMX record company. And like, I've been doing music, and I got my first record deal when I was probably like, 
14 years old. So I've been doing music my whole life. Like there's no plan B. So and when um I was Youngberg, a lot of different things were going on, and like people didn't know I was producing and writing my own records. So if you look at my album that I dropped in and like songs like "Sexy Can I" with me and Ray J and all this different stuff, I was actually the guy that was like behind the scenes producing, co-producing, co-writing all these different records. So from there, being a producer and a songwriter was just something naturally that came with it. And um, I always wanted to be an executive. I always looked up to people like um, L.A. Reid. Um, Craig Kyleman, uh just uh, just the the big people that I know seat so I always wanted to take it to a super executive level like shout out to Barry Gordy just people like that that really were inspiring to me so I always knew that rapping wasn't going to be my full thing as an artist I wanted to pull back and then work behind the scenes and I've, it's, it's worked out God it's yeah. been really good no, yeah definitely I was thinking that because when did you actually know that okay this is when I want to um, you had it in your mind but when did you know you wanted to move on to it that? happened organically like uh I was working and I was just producing a lot of different songs and um I went and uh Tamar Braxton is an artist that I wrote and produced a lot of um work with her and like that was kind of like the I, I caught her a single and it was just like, all right, bet I'm going full fledged into being a writer and a producer, and that's just been it from there. The timeline has shown that you've got um, a very strong work ethic. Mm -hmm. So, what would like an everyday, usual day or week look like for you? Um, a regular day for me, okay, the regular week, I, we work six days out of the week. So, it's different now because, like, I'm kind of like back in artist mode. Like, I've been here, but like, if I was just in LA and writing and producing and being doing what I do every day, we go to the studio, me and my team, shout out to Christian, Ivory, Source, Ace Red, um, Goldie, Rocky. It's a bunch of us and that's a collaborative, collaborative group and we just go to the studio every day. We'll probably go to the studio at like four o'clock and then we'll probably end at like two in the morning. And then from there, we just do it every day, six days a week. And we make like 10 songs every time we go. So every week I'll probably have 60, 50, 45 new records, and we just keep doing that over and over again. That's how we have so much volume, man. Because mm -hmm. it's really rare that we go in the studio and like cook a song from scratch. Like a lot of my songs, like pretty much most of them, majority that you ever heard, they were demos that were done with me and my team. And I just presented the song to the artist and said, yo, I think you should sing this, this will work for you. They somehow agreed with me, we were able to knock it out, and then everything comes to fruition of where we at now. So for me, it's just about staying on the grind and just keep making music, making music every day, and then that just turns into new hits. Okay, right. So you have one day off in the week. Sunday is the only day off. What do you do on Sundays? Sleep. Lay in the bed <laughs> right, all day, so, yeah. yeah, watch TV, catch up on things that I miss throughout the week or whatever. But other than that, man, just, that's just like the day to just rest my mind. I won't listen to no music. I won't do nothing or whatever. And then I'll just jump right back in it on Monday. Just reset. Yeah, reset for sure. Right. So um, you have mentioned about your um, current album as well. I was uh -huh. going to ask a bit more, like what is what else is there to expect from there? Uh -huh. or is there anything else? Well, man, everybody's on my album, man. Mm -hmm. I, I will... Man, I don't even want to start saying names and like forget <laughs> somebody and people feel like, yo, like you left me off. So, I mean, it's a producer album. It's um, 14 tracks. So every song is probably three of your favorite artists at the least on every song. So it's going to be, man, I, I really want to salute people like Khaled and other people that do these type of producer albums. It is not easy. It is the hardest. It might be way harder doing this than doing actual album as yourself as the artist because you gotta deal with so many different personalities, so many different teams, this manager, that manager, clear this sample, do this. It's like a bunch of stuff going on, but my album is gonna be pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna be full of hits. I'm giving y'all 13 hits, so you can just play it nonstop for real. So when is it looking to be like fully complete? It, I'm done. The end of the summer, I'm gonna drop. Oh. So my new single, Down Bad, we're going to put that out. We're going to let that go crazy at radio, let that blow up, go do what it does for the summertime. And then right at the end of the summer, I'm going to try my album. Well, of course, with another single as well. Okay, well, definitely ready for summer. Looking forward to that. For sure. Also, I just wanted to get your thoughts as mm -hmm. well on publishing deals for mm -hmm. up-and-coming producers. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts in general on that? I think that if you really believe in yourself and you don't have a financial need for like and you're not just drop dead broke, you know, and just like on like nowhere to live and if you have some sort of support system, I think you should hold off on doing a publishing deal for pretty much until you can't take no more, until you had your big hits and then they give you the big bag. Unless you come and you meet a guy like me or you meet a guy like other people that I work with that are similar to something I do that are big name producers and writers. That way you can come and it's instant work. If you sign to a big conglomerate, that doesn't mean you might get a check for $100,000, but that doesn't mean that 
you're gonna they're gonna insert you in all the sessions that you need to do mm -hmm. to fulfill your obligations to move on to your next situation so the money initially it seems like a lot but ultimately i think if you're an upcoming guy and you meet a guy like me and you collaborate well with me then you're enlisted to a certain many amount of placements like last year i had 200 placements the year before that it was 200 plus placements so i'm gonna nail the many that many tracks per year so you have a greater chance of getting your workout and going through the cycle and actually meeting new people and getting out your deal i know a lot of people that sign their first publishing deal and probably still in it 10 years later you know and because of opportunity and or how the deal structure is so if you got some money then i don't think you should do a club deal initially unless you meet like the golden child. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Somebody <laughs> got the high hair. So, obviously, we all know you went from young birth to mm -hmm. hit maker. Mm -hmm. So, what would be your advice for any other artist that would like to do the same thing? Oh man, um, just having a vision. You know, a lot of people didn't. When um, when I told people that I wasn't going to be a rapper no more and I was going to be producing and doing all this other stuff, like a very small percentage of people that were riding with me actually believed in me and were like, yo, like you should do that. So you have to have your own tunnel vision and your own, you have to see yourself where you want to see yourself five years, 10 years down the line and really stick to that and just and have the discipline for it. And then of course with me is to keep God first, you know, and then secondly is just to put that work in. I think that a lot of people have evolved. A lot of people don't look at it like that. They'll say like the, the standouts, it'll be like, like I'll look at Twitter and it'll be like, Joe Button and Two Chains and and Hitmaker have the best rebrand of all time in hip hop history. But I think a lot of people have rebranded themselves. I think that if you look at who the CEOs of the companies are now, like how we spoke about L.A. Reid previously, he started mm -hmm. off as a producer and a songwriter and then turned into the chairman and CEO of the company. Clive Davis is the same thing. I think as you grow, if you're a music man or a music woman. Your position can evolve, but you're still going to be knee deep into the business. So yeah. just having the faith of that is yeah. like something you got to hold on to. So you've mentioned that you're kind of back in artist mode now. Mm -hmm. Would you ever fully go back to being an artist? Hell no. <laughs> I just told you that this, this shit is a movie doing this yeah. is a producer album. And not only that, I think that my biggest gift is to be a gift to other people. Mm -hmm. Like I'm blessed to be a blessing. So like I don't want to like cut that off because of any like and i've lived like a thousand lives like you know like i've i've been the artist i've been the guy that was a hype man for an artists i've been i've been little brothers and family members to people that are famous and artists so all my like self-contained ego and just like yo like i want to do this or something to prove is kind of like thrown out the window at this point my whole vision and for everything i'm doing is just truly to be a testimony for everybody that's ever been through any adversity or have taken some 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 L's or been through some trying situations to know that you can bounce back at all costs as long as you stay focused on what you got going. So that's really my mission right now and just to inspire people. Okay, you also mentioned some producers that inspired you. Yeah. Um, was there anyone else that's inspired you throughout your whole journey? Um, shit, yeah. I mean, what's crazy is I get to work with and, and, and be involved with the people that inspire me, whether... Um, you know, Swiss Beats, I, like I said, I was signed to DMX. He was a huge inspiration for me. And Swiss just hit me the other day. Like, we gonna link up and do some stuff together. Timberland is on speed dial. Kanye is a mentor. Boogs is a mentor. Um, Boogs is like the right hand of Kanye does everything with him. He's actually the guy that like taught me how to be a producer, taught me how to structure my own raps and things of that nature. So I work with all the people that I'm like super look up to. And, and I'm just blessed to even be in that position and even say that. So even though, even though you are where you are now, mm -hmm. would you still say that you still see them as mentors? They help you. Hell yeah! Like I never like 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 I man probably by the time this come out and maybe like by the end of the summer I've been sold a hundred million records. I'm at ninety eight and a half million records sold right now, and like I never feel too big for anything. Like anybody can give me game or anybody can put me on some type of. Uh, different mindset to and show me how, how to move differently it's never like i've been there before i've been big headed to where it's like man fuck everybody like man, i know what i'm doing but now it's just like man i'm in my 30s and i'm just in a different mental place to where it's like this shit is a big deal like this opportunity doesn't get given to a lot of different people like and as you see like everybody wants to be a rapper everybody wants to be a producer everybody wants to be a songwriter and I've just been super blessed, so I don't take anything for granted, and I always want to just be an open book, share information with new people, and I always allow myself to be a sponge and pick up any jewels that I can on the way.